we are going to be looking at watercolor today. If I type watercolor, look how convenient that is. Just pops up in my real watercolor brush set. Here are the brushes I'm looking for for today's demo. One of the things that makes watercolor really look like watercolor is the paper texture showing through the color in the paint. Because as you know, watercolor is not really an opaque medium. It's more of a transparent medium. The texture will come through and be visible. Let's take a look what a difference paper makes. We're gonna start by having paper set as the background layer, bottom layer for my illustration today. I have this file. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can look really closely at it. And it'll come with three variations of this paper texture, a light, a medium, and a dark. I find it useful for overlaying over illustrations when you're done with them with different layer blending modes to give it just a little bit of oomph at the end, but also for purposes like this, putting it at the bottom of something. And I just pasted it here into my document and cropped it down. I pulled up my hue and saturation sliders. The original image Images are all in uh, grayscale. I used the colorize option right here. I tapped on colorize and I adjusted it so it had a little bit of color to it. Knocked the opacity back 15 or 20 percent. It's very very faint but it will make a difference when we paint. As you know in Photoshop, I said this before, the paints do not stay wet and if the paints don't stay wet that means that once you have applied a mark on your canvas, on your document, that mark is fixed. It is permanent but there's a way to work around that. We're going to crack open this real watercolor brush set here. On the Adobe website, they're just called watercolors, so you know what to look for. Skip down to these numbered brushes here, these four, five, and six. I'm just going to select number five for now. I want to show you, I've got a very basic set of watercolors. These are sort of the ones you would expect to find in any basic set. And another thing I think that makes your job a little easier is using colors that people are familiar with and that you'd be familiar with if you're using uh, watercolor in the physical world with real paint. But I'm just going to grab this permanent rose here. If I just make a basic stroke here, paint one. They have a built-in paper texture. Second, you're going to notice that the edges are slightly irregular, but they also have a slightly darker tint to them. The edges of or the borders of the area that you paint. That is another thing that adds to the realism of these paints. Using very light pressure, you'll see that I can even get a very, very faint little splotch of color there and a lot of that paper texture will show through. The other thing to note is that the brush mode for these is set to multiply. Multiply means that every time I paint a new stroke on top of another area, it's going to make whatever is underneath or what I'm painting on top of darker. I change my color, sort of violet color like this, and I paint over this pinkish red here. You can see what it does to the color underneath. What you'll find is the majority of brushes in this set, and there are about 160 brushes in this set. It's very large. If I go to the Natural Edge Painter, this one has a rougher edge, but still gets some darkening qualities here and there. This one also responds to pen tilt and rotation. And I don't mean barrel rotation when I say that, not like the Wacom Art Pen, but the rotation of my wrist to change the angle of the brush when I'm painting. And I can do that mid-stroke for different effects. Now, what I like about this one is it gets a little lighter as I continue to paint my shape, as if it's drying in real time. And watercolor do dry lighter than when you first put them down. But what I like too is that I can come in here and start to darken this edge, but then I can use light pressure and just kind of blend that area into the original color. Now where you're gonna find it's harder to extend shapes you've already painted because of this multiply mode. If I come here and I just lightly touch that area, I can try to control it where you don't see a sort of a border between the two areas that I painted, what's going to happen is you will see that first shape kind of sticking out. And sometimes I'll try and make up for that by adding another little hit close to the edge, close to the border like this, until eventually it just looks like a shape that's part of the interior of the overall shape. That is one way to work around that problem is using this brush, like the natural edge or brushes that are similar to it, that will give you that ability to add to a shape and then slowly darken an area close to where the border of the original shape. And you're going to get these nice textures everywhere and it just makes it feel more natural. See you soon.